welcome back if you haven't seen my videos before i'm ross the oliver man and today we're going to work on a project to get ready for spring it's not the 1955 but that's coming up soon i hope because i would really like to use this sometime in my life so that will be one of the videos coming up tearing it apart but i'll take you around here and show you what we're gonna do I just finished making this nice shiny yellow piece here and what this is is the uh, adjuster off the tongue on my Landall tool and when I bought the thing it did not move it was rusted tight on both ends and it was in such a way that you couldn't heat where it was actually stuck you couldn't get enough heat in here and I couldn't get either end to move so what I did, as you can see from the old one here, I uh, ended up torching off the end so that I could get in there and take the head out of each end and then uh, got them freed up and then decided that I probably should just buy a new piece of box tubing. That would be the simplest. And upon investigation of this, you can see what happened. It has filled with water at some time and froze and busted. And more than likely came in through this hole, which was for the adjusting handle. And once it filled that all up, then it just rested and rested on that uh, adjuster. And you can see on the one, it's this other one, I think. This was the worst one because this is the one that was down and maybe you can't see it from here but anyway one of them is really rusty on the threads even after getting this done but i ordered a new piece of box tubing that was the same thickness as what i had and that was important because if you don't have the wall thickness the same then this piece wouldn't fit inside it was actually cut like what you see here, it's the next step down inside. It would fit perfectly inside this box tubing. And then you just weld around the edges. So I did that yesterday and got those welded back in, put new grease fittings in. This one down here, I actually uh, accidentally welded the hole. So I decided to just drill it out and I tapped it for eighth inch pipe thread and put a grease fitting in. But I figure we'll go put this on and see how it fits and uh, grease it up good. And then that's one more project that's done. We don't have to worry about when it's time to start working ground. So it's pretty simple to remember how it goes because each end is a different size. So the wider one goes at the bottom and the narrower one goes up here at the top. And we'll make sure we grease everything up good before we put it on hopefully i can get that out of there but there we go everything is a hammer if you just use it right so we'll put that on and grease it up i think we probably maybe should grease it with them unscrew them and grease them and then screw them in maybe that would be better first we'll figure it out Too much, that's good. We'll get it nice and slippery so it falls in the dirt in a minute and you know makes a mess of everything. Oh, am I gonna hit you? Maybe. Ooh, I don't remember it being that hard to get in there, but there we go. Okay. Now. Might as well put our pin in this end before we forget. We need our hammer. There we 
go. Precision. Right. Now, that end will probably still have to go in. Let's see what we got here. That's in. Let's screw it out a little bit. And then grease it and then put it back in. All right. We'll work on the end that's right by your face. And we'll put a little bit of grease, a little, on the threads. And screw it in by hand so it's about even with that. And then we'll do our fine tune adjusting by turning it. And actually, I think that we probably won't be able to adjust it finally till it's hooked up because I think the tool is sitting in kind of a kink. And we'll get it all nice and greasy, that's good. And we'll do it in a place where you can't see what I'm doing. Probably would be good if I just move the camera up so you can see what's taking place. And I'll still get it out of your view, probably. Good. Drop that on the ground. That helps. Very close to where we need to be. And I think we're pretty well even too. Very close. There we go. We'll put some grease on our pin. There we go. Put our pin back in here. There we go. Meat hammer works good. And do we want to turn it out? I think we need to just a little bit. But we can wait to do our final adjustment once we hook it up, I didn't bring a wrench or anything, so I think that's what we'll do. We'll wait till we hook it up to make sure we got it at the right pitch of the tongue. But that will work a lot better than no adjustment at all. This thing worked pretty good anyway, the way it was, but I thought it would be nice to be able to adjust it. So what I did in addition to putting grease fittings in is I also drilled a hole on each end on the bottom so that water can get out and my plan is to make sure that whenever I adjust it I always leave it with the grease fittings up so that the holes are you know on the bottom side but who knows that may not work out like I thought but if I'm the only one doing it, it'll probably work. I think this thing is pretty well ready to go now. Uh, if you've never seen one of these before, they've been around for a long time, but uh, basically they level the soil and leave it really nice seed bed. I usually hit it with the 272 disc and then go through and run this one time over it and it's ready to plant so you can see it's got disc blades on it and it's got cultivator shanks and it's got rolling baskets and drag harrow and uh, works really good 
I got this from the same guy that had the 9650. As a matter of fact, this is what he pulled with it. And now it's back to doing the same thing again. I worked on the 9650 and a Kubota for him uh, one year and I took this as partial payment and it had a lot of issues. It had bearings out and shanks missing and the back section of this Haro was gone. And uh, anyway, I took this on partial trade and then a year or two later, I ended up buying the 9650. So now they're back together again. That took some load off the four wheel drive white because I was having to unhook and go back and forth between the two. The 4180, this thing is really too small for. I could pull this about in road gear and uh, move right along. And the 9650, I mean, it's an equal match for it. If you, if you would bury this, that's about what the 9650 wants. So this is a 15 foot, I believe, Landall 875. Like I said, it was missing uh, the back section of Harrow, but the nice thing about Landall is you can still get most every piece. So I ordered new everything. And what really ticks me off is I already hooked it on something and bent it. I got it straightened pretty good, but you can tell if you look at it. It's kind of frustrating because these two were rolled around where you could tell he'd hit something. And... Uh, I never could find the third section back. He said he had it somewhere, but I couldn't find it. So I just ordered a new one. And I made it probably two years with it. And then I got stuck close to the fence or started to get stuck. And on my way out of pulling out, I just barely caught this corner on a post. And it was enough to wrap that around. Kind of frustrating that it had to bend the one new one and not one of the ones that was, you know, already destroyed. So we just straightened it and we'll go with that. I think the only other thing I've had to do uh, to this since using it after fixing it up the first time was I broke one shank off last year and I had a replacement already. So I put that on here earlier. Uh, I don't know if it was last fall or this spring, but got that done. Uh, before I used it, I took all the wheels off and uh, greased them, and I drilled and tapped and added grease fitting so that I could get to these bearings here, and I think I even did it for the wheels. I added grease fitting so that you could do a little bit of service to them. Uh, this thing is awkward with these tandems in such a way that if it uh, would blow a tire, you're going to pretty well be stuck where you are, or you're going to have to try to chain the the tandem up so it doesn't float because you can't take off the flat tire and keep going like it is or something will drag the ground so you need to do some chain up work or something if you want to try to limp it home so i figured it'd be better just to go through all the wheel bearings and everything ahead of time before that problem arose i think i put two new tires on it the inside two and the outside too, I probably should go ahead and do because you can see this is one that was on it and it's getting pretty dry cracked. So I don't know if that uh, guy should do that ahead of time or not, but I probably will. I put all new hoses on it because the hoses were just a disaster. I think one was bad and he had thrown in a hose, but I just redid it and made custom hoses so that everything laid out like I wanted. I reused the pipe that was there uh, to some extent, but it's a pretty good thing. Before this, I had used a uh, Forest City Do-All, and that was a pretty good tool as well, but I didn't own it. I was borrowing it from a friend, and you couldn't really get parts for it. And I looked around for one of these for a good while and never could find one, and then I found one right across the street. So. It doesn't get much closer than that, so that's a pretty good deal. But uh, I really like this. It sure beats uh, the old way we did it, which is disc it a bunch of times with a drag harrow and then, you know, plant it and then it's still rough. So you can leave a nice smooth area when you're done. So if you have to do tillage, this is something that is well worth it in my opinion. I know people like no-till, but I really don't have a choice in a lot of the ground that I have because in the fall when you harvest, you leave ruts. 
so you might as well by the time you just hit the places with the ruts you might as well just do the whole field so that's kind of the way i'm set up so but i think this is going to work out good and uh, like i said once we hook it up we'll see how it how it sits and then do the final adjustment i think the only thing i really need to do still is i need to cut this tab off and put a new one on my jack won't fit on the on the tab that's there i think it's been bent or twisted or something so we'll have to address that but otherwise i think this thing is ready to go so i'm sure you'll see it in more videos it's been in videos before well i can't hardly leave you on a oliver channel without using an oliver so we'll do a cold start on the 1650 and take a bale to the cows because i'm sure they're hungry Almost. This clamp on fork is kind of my own invention. Taking a three point fork and making it fit over the edge of this bucket. Cause I didn't want to have to take the bucket off all the time just to put the fork on. I eventually want to put a, a skid steer style plate on the front of the loader, but I haven't got that done. So for now, this is the way I've been doing it. And basically the top link up there holds it from tipping in and then I got this chain to chain around the bucket to hold it from coming off at the bottom and then I also learned that I need to put a bolt through here and I just take a 3 8 bolt put it through a hole I drilled in the bucket because otherwise this fork will go side to side and that causes a problem so just this little little bit extra is all it takes I don't even use a wrench, just hand tight is good enough. mentioned it before but I really hate net wrap this is just a pain to have to mess with I know it keeps them nice when you store them but if you don't cut it off before you take it out there it will just get everywhere
and since I'm blessed with mud, we have to go through a pretty wet area to get to where we're going. But that's the way it is. that effortlessly really other than getting muddy and whatever that's just the way that is ever since I started feeding they've kind of learned the drill and they don't try to rush the gate anymore and come out they know that I'm gonna take the stuff out there and leave it so I don't have trouble with that too much anymore but Occasionally you get one screwball like this here that's coming up here now Because she seems to think that I'm gonna Magically produce more food. So I've been feeding a lot more uh, Hay and things to the cows since I started doing it than grandpa used to but I've also had less times where they busted out and Taken off so I think there's something to that there's a healthy balance between overfeeding and you know keeping them in what they need so i don't know i don't claim to be a livestock expert by any means but they don't look too bad well i think we'll call that a video so as always if you enjoyed even part of it give it a thumbs up and uh, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss whatever i come up with next Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.